22 mag and a handgun is the same as 22 long rifle and a rifle. I've actually heard that statement a whole bunch of times throughout the years. And to be honest, I don't know how much truth there is to that or not because I've never really been into a 22 long rifle uh, ballistics. So I picked up a, a 22 long rifle rifle, this 18-inch uh, Rossi RS-22. This should suffice for this test to see if the 22 long rifle is the same as the 22 magnum in a handgun. 22 long rifle through a rifle versus 22 magnum through a handgun. Now I happen to be using my Ruger LCRX with a three inch barrel, but that, that is actually a good revolver for this test. You know, there's a specific reason why I picked up a three inch barrel because it's pretty much average. It equates to a four inch barrel semi-automatic. And on top of that, this, this uh, velocity I get out of this is actually significantly faster than out of my four and five eighths inch uh, Heritage Rough Rider. So overall, it's a good uh, thing to test a 22 Magnum out of. So 22 mag in a handgun, is it the same as 22 long rifle in a rifle? I'm really skeptical of that because I do know, and most people know, that 22 long rifle uses pretty much copper washed bullets, which is a lot less copper than a, um, a jacketed bullet the way a 22 Magnum uses it. So even if the, the velocities are the same, there might be something to having a harder bullet. Now I'm using the mini mag versus the maxi mag today for our ammunition. CCI mini mag. I don't even know what that's rated at. I believe it's something like, uh, oh, it says in the box, 1235 feet per second. Our 22 mag rated 1875, but obviously through a handgun, we're gonna lose a lot of velocity. Both of these are 40 grain targets. So I'm gonna do more tests on this, but I wanna start with just your basic 40 grain target loads of the same brand. So we're gonna go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. Then I'm gonna do my 10% clear ballistic test. I'm gonna go into playing clear ballistics, see what the best potential of those cartridges are. After that, I'm gonna do more of our real world simulation. Four layers of denim on this first three inch piece that represents our pectoral muscle. I know that's redundant, but I like to stay consistent. After that, we'll have a quarter inch medium density fiber board that's gonna represent hitting ribs or sternum. That's more of our real world simulation. We'll see how they compare that way. And then I am gonna shoot at my steel See what kind of accuracy I can get with these. So well, let's get started with this test. All right, first up, we have our 22 rifle. This is our mini mag, 40 grain, lead round nose, copper wash, rated at 1235 feet per second. And I believe this is an 18 or an 18 and a half inch barrel. So we're gonna see what kind of velocity and accuracy I get with these. Uh, by the way, this is my first shots fired with this rifle. Now, you guys might not be able to tell, you probably can't, but it is extraordinarily dark out here. I actually have my cameras set to pick up a lot more light than what's out here. So if I do get some chronograph read errors, that's why, and I'll have to put my light system on there. So 22 long rifle mini mags. Let's see how I can get with these. Yeah, we're having errors. So let me set up my lights on that chronograph see if that helps all right so hopefully with the lights set on here this might make a difference so see if i get any reads here you go lower 1197 1190 12 17 11 12.07, so right there at about 1,200 feet per second is our average velocity we're working with there. So that's a pretty good velocity. Now our 22 Magnum, same bullet weight, only a three inch barrel. Let's see if we get around that 1,200 feet per second. Let me go single action because I gotta go kind of close to these sensors. I pulled that one. 12.47. 1194, 1216, 1206, 1253. So up until that last shot, uh, the averages were pretty darn close. So we're working with just a tad more energy with the 22 mag through the uh, handgun, but the rifle is obviously easier to be accurate with. Now the big question is, is that bullet design gonna make a difference? Now the 22 mag is a flat point and that could make a difference overall in its penetration. But my main thought is, you know, what's it gonna do going through the MDF and stuff like that? Is it gonna deform less? So let's hit our ballistics job lock and try to answer some of these questions. All right, the plain clear ballistics, I'm gonna try my best here to keep both these muzzles at about the same distance from the job lock. So yeah, we're, we'll do about a foot away here with our 
long rifle through the rifle. All right. Let's head above that with our 22 mag. Let's go take a look. So yeah, that flat point definitely made a difference here and what we're seeing for our terminal ballistics. Now, I'm going to say that, uh, yeah, that's, you know, it's kind of not fair in some sense because that flat point is going to push that. So push it through a lot of material. So yeah, it went through, <laughs> let's see here, uh, 35 inches of ballistics gel completely through. As were our 22 long rifle, you know, when we test 22 long rifle like this in our handgun, generally it does the same thing. It looks like it kind of tumbles and it stops usually around 10, 11, 12 inches. Here we got a more ideal penetration of about 16 inches. And I would say, you know, that's, that's okay. So my big question is, you know, through our more real world simulation with where that bullet is going to deform more. Obviously our 22 long rifle is going to deform more. Will that have a bigger effect on this? So let's put on our denim, put on our MDF and see how they compare. All right, four layers of denim, three inches of clear ballistics and then a quarter inch MDF. Let's see how our 22 long rifle does. All right. Taking a look here. All right. I'll set that with our 22 Magnum. Go take a look. All right, so really when we put our MDF in there, you know, one curved up, one curved down, penetration is almost the same. It almost does seem like it's the same when we put more of our real world simulation in there. You know, because when you hit that rib simulation, if you hit anything hard, even though this has a flat point on our 22 mag, you're losing a lot of momentum really quickly. So I could see why that would happen like that. <clears throat> and when we look here at our holster MDF, there's not really a big difference there. They look pretty much identical. Our penetration with our 22 long rifle is at about 16 inches. It's exactly the same as what it was without the MDF. That's very interesting. Now our 22 Magnum through the MDF, even though uh, you know we got less penetration, uh, it still performed pretty good. And instead of that, you know, over 35 inches of penetration, we got about almost 16 and a half. I want to say about 16 and a third. So very similar performance and both the 22 long rifle and the 22 magnum through our mdf shot are backwards which would indicate tumbling obviously and they're not going to go straight and then be backwards if they didn't at least turn at least one time and when we looked at the 22 long rifle through the plain gel it did that same thing so both of these are doing pretty well for what they are so i would say yeah they're very similar so let me shoot my steel. We'll take a close up look at these and I'll, I'll shoot my steel see what kind of practical accuracy I can get with these. All right, so here's a close up look at these bullets. Uh, this is not very interesting because, you know, <laughs> there's solid points here. It'll be a lot more interesting when we move on to hollow points. But here's our 22 long rifle through the plain gel. Not a whole lot of deformation at all. And we lost that 22 magnum and we went straight through. Now, when we look at our MDF shot, here's our 22 long rifle. Not really any change to that diameter, but the bullet nose has deformed enough on one side that when it hit the MDF, it started to really tumble quite well. Now with our 22 Magnum, there's essentially no deformation to that bullet other than the, the, the nose of it has a slight indentation, almost like it's starting to be a hollow point, <laughs> but that's the only deformation to that bullet. So much harder bullet, no deformation at all as where our 22 Magnum took on a lot. So my opinion is, you know, the, the tip of this flattened against the MDF and started to tumble really well, even though it did tumble um, in plain gel too. But I think that also contributed to it. Now with our 22 mag, I think, you know, that flat point 
when it hits something hard, it starts to de destabilize it because it's such a light bullet. If it were a much heavier bullet, it would not destabilize quite like that. But because it's a, it's a light bullet, there's not a lot of mass and momentum. Uh, it destabilized and started tumbling. So that's a close, close up look at those bullets. Unimpressive, but nonetheless, there they are. All right, so I'm about 12 yards from the target. I want to see what the difference in practical shootability is for me. I'm just going to fire off some rounds, you know, see a <laughs> handgun. How hard is it to hit that target versus a rifle? So, so 22 mag. All, right, all those shot really low for me for some reason. Now I'm holding my rifle down here in my legs here. Let's see what I can do with this. Am I in safety? No. Now obviously, <laughs> a rifle is easier to get a sight picture with and pop them off. And yeah, a lot less recoil on this because it is a lesser of a cartridge, but also the gun is heavier. So let me back it up some. I already 75 yards from the target. This is mostly just for fun at this point. So I'll shoot some rounds here, then I'll get out of your hair. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here all day and shoot 100 rounds, but... I'll shoot some rounds at 75 yards. We'll talk about this. It's getting so damp out here that I can't even see through these glasses. So I have to take them off. So let's see what I can do with our 22 mag revolver. I'm not sure how many I could hit I hit because 22 mag is so loud and there's so much flash coming out that you can't see if something's hitting the dirt or the steel and you also it's so loud that it it it, it over encompasses the sound of that uh, steel being hit so set my rifle over here like we often did as kids out hunting you probably figured it out by now I grew up on rifles so Let's see here if I can hit with this. All right, so I pulled a couple. I believe I pulled them to the right because I saw my sights uh, drift a little bit to the right. So I think I did just pull them a little bit right. Kind of got overconfident there thinking I could hit them all real quick. Not quite. Uh, if I slow down, I could do a little bit better. So, looking at a 22 long rifle and a handgun versus a 22 magnum, or a 22 long rifle and a rifle versus a 22 magnum and a handgun. Part of me wants to say <clears throat> 22 magnum and a handgun is kind of stupid. In, in some regards, it is. Like, if we're talking a two inch barrel, a lot of times the velocity you're getting out of like a two inch barrel revolver, a 22 magnum is very similar to, let's say, like a four inch semi-automatic uh, 22 long rifle. Like 100 foot pounds energy typically with like a two inch barrel 22 Magnum revolver. And with a really high end, like a Gila something, super, super something or whatever, I can also hit 100 foot pounds energy out of my four inch Taurus TX-22, the same as that stub nose 22 Magnum. But the Magnum has a lot more blast, a lot more recoil, a lot more everything. So. And if you're comparing something like that, yeah, it's kind of like dumb in a way. But what we are seeing here is out of a rifle, we are getting roughly the same power as that 22 mag out of a handgun, you know, with less sound blast, more accuracy, all of that. So honestly, if I had to pick one of these as like a home defense gun, I would pick this rifle over this handgun. Obviously, the handgun can be concealed pretty easily and have the ballistics of a... a 22 long rifle rifle now looking at some of the ballistic information I, i've saw it does look like with the hot enough 22 long rifle round we're approaching 200 foot pounds energy and i really haven't seen any numbers that suggest a 22 magnum handgun could do that it probably could if it was like a six or a seven or eight inch revolver but not in the typical handgun range but when we look at just typical ammo mini mags here versus maxi mags it would appear that at least through our MDF shot that they are very similar. So that's what you get to get today. A little interesting test I've been curious about for some time. So that's what you get. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.